excited to have Megan Ward, an email marketing expert and digital marketing educator as our guest. Megan's approach to digital business is not just about growth for the sake of growth. It's about creating well-connected audiences and achieving a harmonious balance between work and life. In this episode, Megan unveils her unique journey into the world of pop-up podcasts. With a remarkable track record of organically growing email lists and helping clients achieve substantial growth, Megan brings a wealth of knowledge and innovative ideas to the table. Let's get to it. Welcome back to our next case study episode. We're so excited to have Megan Ward. Megan, I'm so excited to talk with you today and all about Pop-Up Podcast. Thanks for coming. Thank yes, thank you so much for having me, Nora and Lindsay. I'm thrilled to be here. This is awesome. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Let's kick things off by talking a little bit about how you first discovered private podcasts. I'd love to hear the story behind how you got started. Yeah, so I was trying to think back. I discovered you guys, it had to have been really early 2021. Mm -hmm. And my first initial quest was to set out on making an audio version for every single one of my blogs just to become more accessible, right? And as I was doing this, I thought, huh, how else am I going to use this? And I came up with this idea because I was getting ready to launch a new program. And I thought, well, what can I do that's different than just a webinar and having everybody come just sit and watch a video? And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try this. And I coined the term pop-up podcast. And it essentially was a very limited time event, a limited series of episodes where people could come and listen and consume all of that content, moving them toward my offer instead of sitting down and watching another webinar. Not that there's anything wrong with webinars. I still do them sometimes. They can still be incredibly beneficial and convert very well. But this made a massive difference for me. And just to throw some numbers out there, well, we'll just hit the ground running real quick. My consumption rates were out of this world. I had over 96% of wow. signups actually show up and listen to episode mm. one that week. Wow. So when you compare that with what the rates are of show ups to webinars, it was just astronomical. And then over uh, just about 70% of those signups actually consumed the entire series that week. And there were four total episodes. It's really hard to get people to show up to live events. And I love mm -hmm. that audio just makes it easy to consume anytime, anywhere. So I love those numbers. It really reinforces how easy it is for people to listen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious. So like you, you talked about wanting to turn your blogs into accessibility. And then was it then where you're like, you had you heard of private podcasting as an option? I think it's interesting because I even try to think back to where we were before, as we were building Hello Audio, there wasn't even really the concept of it, but it did start to make its way around. And then I think mm -hmm. there is something really interesting when you think about when you pair accessibility, then with, you know, just like consumption and intimacy and like connection and that kind of thing, then you start to be like, oh, what else could I do with that? So I'm curious, was it were you like, I'm looking for a private podcast or were you like, I want to turn this into audio and that led you to private podcasting? It led me. Yeah. It led mm. me turning the blogs into the audio and then just thinking about what else I could do. At the time I was working with a popular true crime podcaster and we had taken oh. some of snippets from some of their episodes that are on the Patreon and used those as lead magnets. And that's where I was like, huh, I could do this. I could totally do this too. Even though at the time I didn't have a podcast of my own. And so that's where I started getting the idea. Like, how can I do this without having a podcast? Because they had all the setup. They had the way to send the RSS feeds to people so that they could sign up and listen to those as a quote, lead magnet leading people into their Patreon. And I was like, there's got to be a way that I can do this too. And I was like, well, I've got it. Hello, audio. So that's where I started really dabbling into that entire idea of how can I do this and use that as a lead magnet, as of course now as essentially an audio webinar mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Cool. Do you want to share any other ways that you're using it in your business? And then we'll dive into the pop-up podcast. Yeah. So framework. just about all of my courses at this point have the Hello Audio version. So as soon as you nice. walk, you log in and you see the welcome, it's like, hey, you can watch all of these videos or you can listen to them. And I'm seeing a lot more consumption rate with the actual course. I've had people who listen to it, then they go back and watch the videos and they go back and listen again. And so they're almost consuming the course three times when originally they would barely get through the whole thing because they had to sit down and watch it. 
Yeah, totally. We definitely see that too. I love that, you know, hit him with the audio version, like right up front. So then the person can be like, oh, good. Thank God. (laughs) Super good. Okay. So yeah, let's walk through your strategy for using it. Were you launching a course on the back end of it or were you launching services? What on the back end of it? Yeah, that time it was like services and VIP days. Um, Okay. And then of course, just prepping and warming up people for, and this, it launched in May, ended like early June. I was getting ready for Black Friday too. And I know that sounds early for people, but it is. You've got to already be nurturing everybody and getting them on that track for all the Black Friday sales that early. So yeah, but originally it was moving into VIP days and services. Cool. Yeah. So let's then break it down. Whatever you want to share about the way that you do your pop-up podcast and Mm -hmm. however you thought about it, what planning went into it, what kind of marketing logic or thought process is behind that. So I did it all organically. I did it without running any ads at the time. I thought about it and I said, well, let me just see what I can do. How does this turn out organically? And I wound up building a launch team for people to just help get it out in front of their audiences. And you wouldn't believe, you know, people Hmm. just agree to do it. And what they got was early access to the episodes for the pop-up podcast. And they also received, there was like a, a, an order bump. It was like 27, 37 bucks where you could get some extra products that really made the most out of that private podcast as well. So that way, if I didn't lead anybody into those VIP days and those services, then I was still making a little bit of money. That actually converted right at 50%, by the way. So about 50% of signups purchased that low ticket offer, which was very exciting. But back to the launch team. So I just asked people, hey, I'm doing this thing. It's totally different. I think your audience would like it because it was all about kickstarting your email list. And so we talked about the very beginnings, like when you're just getting started with email marketing, how do you know where to you know, sign up? What email marketing provider do you choose? And so there were a lot of people that I asked to be on the launch team was like, oh my gosh, my audience would love this. And so they just emailed about it. They just shared it on social media. And I was able to grow my list by about 1,100 people in about three weeks, which wow. was massive. That's so. really cool. So I love this because I want to point out too from just like marketing strategy. So you gave something that was like a specific topic that would be like, uh, mainstream. I don't know if mainstream is the right word. We know it's a problem that a lot of people who are in online business who serve customers that could potentially be interested in this growing an email list is hands down one of the biggest obstacles in starting a business. And so then you offer affiliates a way for it to be consumed. The sales event looks a little bit different. It is not a webinar. It's not a challenge, right? It is in particular, a private podcast that will take them through the content and then you're selling on the other side. Okay, cool. So you're growing your list before the launch and you're you're collecting people that can help promote it. And then, yeah, take us to the next step. Yeah. So this is getting everybody excited about the event to come and getting, telling them like what we're going to talk about, what day we're going to talk about certain things. And there were certain things that people would respond and be like, I'm so excited for day two, or there's something in day three that I can't wait to listen to. And so it was getting them very excited. One of the aha moments, and I know we were probably going to talk about this in a minute, but one of the aha moments is when this was all going on, I was getting messages from moms like me who were like, this was amazing. I learned so much while I was cooking dinner and the kids were sitting over here doing their homework. It was just that moment where I was like, wow, this really did become something that shows up and serves people where they are at in their busiest seasons of life. And so it made such a huge difference and it really won over my audience and it made them super fans of me because they were like, look at Megan, you know, going this extra step. And it it wasn't that hard. It was all thanks to Hello Audio making it possible. Do you think that some of the promotional partners that were interested in sharing it were probably, do you think you would have had the same response if it was a traditional webinar? Or do you think it was because it was a little bit different, because mm-hmm. it was accessible? Do you think that made a difference in their willingness to promote? They obviously love you. They they believe in you. They trust you and all the things. But do you think the medium had any difference? I think it had a huge difference, an absolute huge difference. And that's what a lot of the messaging was when I would create the swipe copy for them. And on the, the sign up page, which was basically a sales page, even though it was a free event. It was all about, this is not your mama's lead magnet. This is not your mama's webinar. This is totally different. It's audio only. So you can just listen in the car and that sort of just copy and letting them know that that is what 
what this was going to be all about, I think made a huge difference. Absolutely. It's not just, Love oh, that. well, she's hosting another webinar. It's, oh, I've not seen anybody do this before. I've not seen an audio only event. So mm. I love that. Yeah. I think if I were, I think I'm a lot less likely to promote webinars these days. Mm-hmm. Not, and again, not that there's, they still work. It just feels heavy sometimes, I think. Mm-hmm. And so I love that, that just being able to approach that and being able to put that content in a different form and making it accessible. And I think getting those messages from your audience that said, this is the first time I've ever been able to actually complete something mm-hmm. I've signed up for. I mean, those I think make all the difference, especially when you care so much about people actually getting results, which is really cool. That's cool yeah. that you got those. Absolutely. So how do you think about the structure of it? The episodes, I don't know if you've done several of these up until this point or now, or yeah, you probably hosted a few of them. So what about the way that you do the episodes? Is there some sort of framework or or thought process that you have? Yeah. And I do teach even more in detail in it in my signature course, the pop-up podcast system, but they are all bite-sized episodes and that's not a secret at all. I keep them very to the point. There's not a lot of fluff in there. We get down to business and uh, teach what needs to be taught in those episodes. The very first pop-up podcast that I hosted had four episodes in it. Okay. And since then I've been doing about three episodes. However, I have some students that have been using it as a hype event leading to their bigger event, such as a bundle Mm. or a summit. And so they're getting everybody excited about what's going to be in this bundle, what's going to be in the summit. And they're seeing a lot more conversions when they've had that pop-up podcast before their actual event. Oh, I like that hype event. That's a cool mm-hmm. way of thinking about that. Like yeah. That's fascinating. I, I love that the strategy because we're hearing this is now the second or third time we've heard around four episodes feel yeah, really roughly, good. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So this is yeah, it's interesting that we're kind of getting some more instances or some more data points to kind of mm-hmm. to back that up. And we'll definitely put a link to your, to the program and to the signature program in the show notes, if people are interested in checking that out. I'm curious if there's other nuances that people should know about when they kind of think about putting together, because it can be a little overwhelming. What do, how do I talk about it? No fluff is also something we've heard time and time again. So I love the fact that's being reinforced here. Are there any other nuances that you think would be important when people are crafting kind of a, a, a high converting pop-up podcast? I think just crafting your episodes and really getting down to the point, and I know I'm I'm kind of reiterating what I said a second ago, but really just thinking about what that very end is in mind, what you're going to be moving them toward, and it might not be anything just yet. You might really be using it as just a lead magnet and really nurturing them, but there's going to be a point you're going to sell to them. So really keeping that in mind and just keeping your episodes moving slowly into that direction but again, without that fluff. Super smart. The no fluff, I think, is really key for audio. I'm wondering, do you tend to be more transparent up front? That's where you're kind of headed, even if you're not pitching on day one or, or pitching on that first episode. Is that something you typically find yourself doing? Yes. Yeah. I like to be up front. Like this is, you know, and you don't just say, yeah, I'm going to be selling to you here at the (laughs) end, but they get a really good idea that something's coming. But I've also had that low ticket offer attached to that first go around. And I would talk about that throughout. And I would say, if you purchase the additional materials, make sure and grab those. If you didn't, you can still grab them for 27 bucks or whatever it winds up being. And that seems to help let them know and move them toward those sales. And they should also know, like, there's going to be a point where I get all this set up and I'm going to need that next step. Mm -hmm. So we kind of were talking about that and I'm kind of trickling it in a little bit. So it's not a shock, you know, at the end, just as any webinar, we know we're going to be sold to, but I think through the formation of the episodes, which I do walk through that too in the course, exactly how I put all those together in the signature framework for putting those episodes together. I kind of help teach about the best way to, to sprinkle that in. Got it. Nice. Cool. It's funny because I'm like, oh, the strategy that is like underlying some of this is around creating buyers that are also in the podcast at the same time. So with the upsells, right? I think that's kind of interesting too. And I don't think, 
I don't know if you want to speak a little bit more to that, but it is interesting. I think there's layers to it, right? Because you're bringing in other people's audiences, right? And they're coming in contact with this podcast that they're signing up for, but then they also could buy this other thing. And this is someone who maybe didn't even know who you were. That's the dream, right? This cold traffic is coming in and they're maybe even making a purchase at that port. Can you speak more to that funnel construction, if you will, or anything, any nuances or insights that you have about doing it that way versus just maybe a cold private podcast that leads to sales? First of all, you're getting in front of an audience that someone already likes, knows, and trusts. And when mm-hmm. they, this person that they already know and trust put your name in front of them, a lot of them know, like, they're not going to put just some random person in front of me. So they're already like, well, you know, she thought enough of Megan to tell me about this. And this is a free event, completely free. And I think that makes a big difference. And I think that's why I saw a little bit higher conversion rates when it came to, it was essentially a tripwire after they signed up for the pre pop-up podcast. But then if they didn't think so right away, it was still offered to them later on. I do think that did make a difference being in front of someone else's warm audience and then going into to that tripwire. Do you have um, the breakdown of like people who bought the trip and, you know, higher, you know, th- their conversion numbers or listen? Like it would be interesting to see if they listened more. I don't know. That, I do it, have those. I don't have them. I do know that 50% of the signups purchased that low ticket offer. Yeah, that's it was huge. Right, okay. right yeah. at 50, which was a massive mm-hmm. amount. I was blown away completely. I did not go back yet, or I might have them somewhere. I'd have to dig them up. What the actual conversion rate was from those people to the services sure. that came yeah. later. But obviously I was very pleased with, Yeah, you know, 50% of 1100 people buying. <laughs> pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, And then just thinking about private podcasting in general, like what results have you seen in your own business um, now that you've incorporated audio a little bit more? Yeah, I've just seen a much um, more in tune audience. They're much more connected um, because because it's reaching them in a way that's just easier for them to consume. Just a week ago, I was hosting a more traditional live webinar. It was more like a workshop. But for the replay, we took it and put it in Hello Audio as well. So then they could also just listen to it. And so I saw a lot more people going back and listening to that version than going back and watching the actual replay. I think it makes just such a huge difference. I'm always finding ways like, oh, can I flip that to audio only? I know it was a workshop, but man, it would be so great if they could just listen in just to get them to consume the content and move them towards some sort of purchase or next step. I love that. That's a that's an unintended side effect of Hello Audio. We have to check ourselves. We're like, wait, should this be audio? <laughs> because sometimes yeah. we make it so complicated and we're like, what in our business is an audio? And we have a lot of holes that like our users do because we get inspired by you guys. And then it's like, oh, dang, we still don't have an audio newsletter or whatever. But yeah, it's kind of like now you start to see your business through audio first eyes and mm-hmm. it can get dangerous, mm-hmm. but it's also really cool because I think it just feels easier for the most part. And so we always have to remind ourselves. I know that's a lot of unlearning, like typical marketing that I think we have to you step just, back and think about. Well, and you just reminded me, so I don't have an audio version of my emails yet. And I was sitting here reading through and I was reading my email that's going out next week out loud. And I was like, man. Oh yeah. This, <laughs> this would make a good right. Yeah. Actually, right? Just, and that's a great idea for anybody else that's listening in. Just record your emails, especially if they're really good and people love to to listen to them. And then just put a footer at the bottom of your email to say, Hey, do you want to listen to my emails? Listen to me read my emails. And it sounds silly, but also it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. I have there's one person I get an email from, and I think it's every Monday. And it on the top and it says, would you rather listen to this? And I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. Every time I see it, yes, I would actually much rather listen to this. And I click on it and it's an MP3. And I'm like, no, never mind. (laughs) You're not going to be like, I am in the founder of Kello Audio. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) No, not. Do better. I don't want to listen to it that way. I'd rather just have it in my pocket all the time and know exactly where to go to it. Kind of what we were talking about earlier, which is, you know, you just know where your content is and having it in that podcast app, whatever your favorite one that you're using, it's just there. 
mm-hmm. and not having to search for it. I don't know about you, but searching for an email, no, that's mm-hmm. not happening. Searching mm-hmm. for an audio file that I downloaded somewhere, sometime, no, not happening. So just knowing I could go to it and then whatever your latest newsletter is, I could pop it right there. That to me is so much easier and so much lighter. Oh, just- yeah. So if you go open your podcast app, what's going to pop up? Usually mine's defaulting to whoever just recently dropped an episode. Mm-hmm. So that's about to get consumed because it's at the tip top of their list. And they're like, oh my gosh, her emails are so funny or hers are just wonderful to consume. I'm going to hit play real quick because it's going to be probably a quick two to three minute listen. Yeah. So. And comparatively, like as we're on a public podcast right now, there's a lot of production going into this. We have guests, we have scripts, we have, you know, video. I mean, there's just so much more that goes into this. And this is a way to use that same feeling of like it pops up to the top, but like you're actually repurposing. I don't even know if it's a, if it's right that it's repurposing, but it is like you're taking something you've already written, something that you are putting time into anyways, because an email list is very important. And you're now giving someone a different medium and just another mm-hmm. way for them to become more obsessed with you. That's a pretty net positive for not a lot of lift. And I think Mm -hmm. that is what we always try to drive home at Hello Audio is like, what can, what tweaks can you make in your business that, you know, doesn't take as much effort, but could have a really astronomical ROI. And I think to me, I'm just like, it's an audio product. It's an audio version of something you already do. That's easy. The content's already there. Now you just have to pick up a mic. Yeah. And then once you set it up too, it is easy. It is really easy to just like put something in Hello Audio. It really is. And it goes everywhere it needs to, right? That's the key. Once I saw the email or maybe it's a Facebook notification from Derek saying, guess what? We've got Google Drive integrated now. I was like, oh my gosh, like it makes it even more easy for us. Mm -hmm. So, And I don't know anybody that's listening in if you're like, oh yeah, but I don't have the best mic and I don't know about all this podcasting, just know that this girl right here that you're listening to recorded her first two pop-up podcasts on her Android phone <laughs> and it that. was fine and nothing ha- nothing bad happened and it worked great and the audio was not that terrible and it was just, it was so easy for me to put it together. So just to let y'all know, that even somebody using an Android phone recording your pop-up <laughs> podcast can have good conversions. I love it. So, And on that thread, there are absolutely people who are probably sitting here thinking, I don't know if it's for me. It seems like it's kind of complicated. I mean, AppSumo, all these, mm-hmm. you know, product hunt, there's technology and tools being thrown at us left and right. And I mean, innately, we think it's going to take a while to integrate a tool into our tech stack or into our business or into our business workflows. So I guess talk to me a little bit about your experience and in terms of integrating a tool like Hello Audio into your workflow and what you would say to the person who is thinking they're not very tech savvy and maybe giving them what's the maybe piece of advice you would give them if they're a little hesitant. It is not hard. And I even started with Hello Audio before you all had the the integrations that there are now. But even now, when I go log in and look, like it is so user-friendly. It's really hard to figure out how to mess it up because it's so easy to just drag your stuff in or just hit the upload button. And it's there's a lot of very easy toggle. Publish this or unpublish this. Click here just to change the name of the episode. Everything is incredibly user friendly. And that was a big deal for me and why I fell in love with Hello Audio anyway, because I, there wasn't a big learning curve. So, anybody that is concerned about the tech, don't be when it comes to Hello Audio and integrating it. Everything is made very user friendly, even for those of us that might struggle with tech. Oh, thank you for saying that. It's it is something that we really took to heart in in designing it because we've experienced it as business mm-hmm. owners. We've experienced trying the new tool and being like, how long is this going to take <laughs> to get up and running? And how, wait, I have to go through how many videos to figure out step one? And do I really need to write in to support? Because that doesn't feel very good for on most tech products. So I think that was always really important to us. And I think the other thing is speed. Right. And in mm-hmm. your ability as a business owner to be able to do things quickly and pivot quickly, because Lord knows what happens in, in our economy or in the world. And sometimes we need to serve our audience in a different way. Mm-hmm. So I think, have you found from your ability to pivot or be able to publish or create quickly? Is that something you've noticed as a shift in your business? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know that, you know, this made it 
very easy because it does it it uploads the files very easily if we're going to talk about the speed a little bit but another thing that was a big deal is that i didn't have to worry about having to convert a video to audio i just drug it over and it made it audio for me so if that was another you know hold back for anybody that's like, oh, i've got all these videos i want to make audio but i don't know how to begin converting them from that video file to an audio file you don't have to because hello audio has already fixed it but i do think that i've seen this shift and i think that's why i saw a lot of success in 2021 with this pop-up podcast too because this was happening right when one of the ios updates had just came out with the changes for facebook ads and facebook oh, yeah. ads just plummeted mm -hmm. and so there's another reason i was like well i'm not about to dabble in that because I don't know what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. And so utilizing that launch team and just shifting my mindset to leveraging the audience of others as well. But I think that this private audio feed, again, was something else different happening in the world at the same time. And people were like, Oh, and so they shifted over to that. I think it made a big difference with everything going on in the industry too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I like that. I think over time, what I've seen in our industry is that it just feels like it's more complicated. Mm -hmm. That as we layer things on, or as we're told we need more things, it just creates a level of operational complexity that is not sustainable for most solopreneurs and for most small businesses that are starting out. And I feel like doing something like going in on audio or not having to worry about slides and do using an audio first approach for a launch, for example, kind of gives us permission as business owners to reduce some of that operational complexity mm -hmm. and reduce some of that pressure. And I think that makes a big difference in how we can show up during that launch too. Because I know Absolutely. we've all done launches where we've been zapped with an energy. I'm in the middle just... of one right now and I'm exhausted. <laughs> but <laughs> but with this, you can. You can show up as you are. You don't have to have your hair washed and gone to get a blowout somewhere. And then you don't have to be dressed all nice and fancy. You can be in your PJs with a messy bun on top of your hair, kind of like I've got now. Y'all can't see it, but Nora and Lindsay can. And it just makes it so much easier to show up and serve. Absolutely. Yeah. I like putting the focus on that versus all the behind the scenes stuff that happens in a lot. The energy feels so much nicer when you do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Definitely. Not having to worry about slides and what you look like makes a big difference. Yes. Huge. Yeah. So I, there was something I was thinking through too. Most of our users or people that we're having come on talk about using Hello Audio. I don't know. You're innovative and you're experimental and you're great marketers. So I'm curious if you have any thoughts about potential use cases that you've that are like bouncing around in that brain of yours or where you maybe think private podcasting is going? I don't know. I'm going to share this. And I mentioned when I was working with podcasters, this one is just, it blows people away. This true crime podcast that I worked with, they had an episode, is just a special one for their Patreon members that talked about their dad. Now they call their dad, Miss KB. Of course, KB is his initials, but they would call him Miss. And people were like, why are you calling your dad Miss? Like uh, we're confused. And so that was a question that they got all the time. Well, they had a Patreon episode where they explained all of that and explained why in the world they did that. So they took that episode, grabbed four minutes, and they made that four minute audio clip a lead magnet, put it out there. And within a, from May to August, they had about 1400 brand new subscribers of people that heard on their podcast, hey, if you want to know why we call our dad this, click here. And they downloaded it and listened to that private audio. Now it, it wasn't through Hello Audio, but just to give you an idea of something so small that they never even thought about. So there could be something that your audience is asking you all the time, and you can just make a super quick private audio clip with it. And make it oh, that's magnet. so good. I love mm -hmm. that. And it's funny because Patreon obviously is very towards podcasters. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. it's all creators, but the way that they talk about podcasting and private podcasting, the assumption is like extra shows or whatever. But yeah, so I love that, that they're thinking about it like that. Because I think a common problem for podcasters is like, how do I get more listeners? And then we always say, then how do you convert those listeners and know anything about them? It's getting them to sign up. So the fact that they're mm -hmm. choosing the private feed, because they clearly could release an episode that says it, they like chose to put it behind something that you have to opt in, right? You have to pay with your email address. Mm -hmm. And we get that question all the time about just private versus public. So that a very public podcast having that win, if you 
flip it and think about it as a creator or course creator or, or digital marketer or whatever and just be like, what thing would people like clamor for? Yeah, if you could turn that thing that they could clamor for into a huge launch because it's mm-hmm. maybe some way they talk about the problem or some vibe that the industry is feeling or your customers or audience are feeling. Yeah. We always are like, gate that stuff because you want to know who's listening. You want that information. Mm -hmm. Um, You want to be able to talk to them more because these are now obviously hyper audience members. The people that are signing up for that are people that are really into that podcast. There's the relationship that those folks have built and now you they've raised their hand and now you have access to them in a way that you didn't on a public podcast. So I think that advice is totally usable for just any content creator, digital marketer, for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. For sure. Good one. I like that. Also, what an interesting use case. I'm like, oh, huh, I could totally see that. <laughs> a four minute lead magnet. That, so here's the other part of this, right? This is just dawning on me. It doesn't have to be this like orchestrated five episode, da, 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 da. No, like yeah. it could be a nugget and like gate that shit, collect that email address, continue the conversation, move them to something else. Because how consumable is that? It's so consumable and so easy. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Okay. Y'all are getting me going. Now my yeah. mind is going. <laughs> this happens and sometimes. Like, so yes, I still have PDFs, but you know, I always talk about, you know, what else can you do? And I'm always mm-hmm. coming up with lead magnet ideas that are different. And so now I'm like, well, I'm going to, I'm about to take these PDFs and I'm about to make them a private audio feed. So yep. you may see me talking about that here soon. Yeah. We'll have Same you on. Time. Give us the details, the juice of that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I love that. Yeah. And that use case is actually really useful in terms of audience response because PDFs are great and now they have you guiding them through it. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it just adds a layer of connection and a layer of guidance that increases consumption. We all know we've got our graveyard of PDFs on different machines, I'm Mm -hmm. sure in different places. I probably have several that are very, very full. Some that I probably have lost track of and don't know where they are in the internet or on the internet, or maybe even a portable hard drive somewhere in my home (laughs) that I have lost track of, which is definitely (laughs) something I am guilty of. But now you've got you guiding them through that valuable worksheet, that valuable ebook, whatever mm-hmm. that ends up being. And there's just now your personality comes your voice. through and yeah. your values. And, and you can and, bounce yeah. back and forth because there may be something they need to go grab from that PDF and you tell them in the audio, hey, this is Pause. in that PDF yeah. on page two. Yeah. Go grab it, copy and paste it, put it in your Google Drive, whatever, so that they can work off of that. And I think too, and of course, you're sprinkling it in the actual PDF too, right? Hey, yeah. don't forget, you can go listen to this. You can bounce back between the two. So they're still utilizing that PDF. I think that your consumption totally. of that lead magnet is going to go way up and not gather all the virtual dust that the rest of them do. It's funny because as an I, I'm a past like educator, so it it has these moments of being like, oh, you're standing up in front of your class and you're like, explaining an assignment, but they're looking at the assignment or possibly looking at whatever the handout is, and there's still the like flair that you put in as a teacher, and that becomes very disjointed when you're like, here's a free thing, and and then all of a sudden you're in their inbox, like, and you're just like, I don't even know what you sent me, I haven't even opened it yet. And that pummel of emails is like the way to get connected. And I'm like, maybe, (laughs) but if we rewind and we're like, you know, walk through the worksheet with them, there's so many times I've downloaded something and I know all of us are, are here on this. It's like, it stays on my desktop for a while. Um, or I never revisit it, but it stays somewhere for a while until I need it. So if I am that disjointed from that initial welcome email or email series that you put or whatever, God forbid login, that's like a whole other story. But like if the PDF is on my desktop, it's like, Sometimes you're reading it and you're like, I actually don't know what they're talking about here. And so, so much of what we download might end up being disconnected from your intention or the information that they needed to be able to do it successfully or have motivation to do it. And I think all of that can be infused very easily into an audio thing that doesn't leave the podcast. To your point, has a link. That would have to be a universal link, I guess, if you did it like that. But either way, like, as we like parse through it, it has a link. So now it's not disjointed. I can see it and I can go and listen. And then and now I'm reconnected. I'm back in your world when I need it because now I'm mm-hmm. finally making that... I don't know, like tweak to my webinar that I, that's why I downloaded your thing. So yeah, super good. I love how that was like a side thing. And then it's like, oh yeah, that's a good, 
<laughs> Let's pick this apart. I could get nerdy about teaching for sure. <laughs> awesome. So we love to ask our guests as we wrap up. We've covered a lot today. We've talked about pop-up podcasts. We've talked about PDFs. We've talked about newsletters, all the things. We also like to ask our guests if there was a private podcast with your life ramblings on it, what would the title of it be? I'm thinking Chronicles of the School Drop-Off Line. That is <laughs> That's awesome. cute. There's some yeah. drama in the there school drop-off line. There is some drama. Really I just saw a reel about one. That would be good. <laughs> you should literally just... So so that's your life's ramblings and you do it in the drop-off uh-huh. line. Yep. I love it. Yep. I yeah. can see it now and I think that would people would really like it. We spend enough time there. I mean, yeah, really. Do. I have yet to enter that world, but I know oh, it's yeah. coming. <laughs> I finally got my youngest into kindergarten. So we've got two school drop-offs right now. So there are two school car lines to be here. Oh, How do you even do that as a family? Are you uh, Now I'm uh, going to well, need the nuances of this. Are you divide and it, conquer? Is mm-hmm. the school district? In the okay. mornings. Yeah, the, mornings, the mornings are divide and conquer. The husband has the young wild one and he goes to do that. And he's got all kinds of stories from that car line. Oh, and then I'm taking the other two. So, Oh, that's good. So then there could be a podcast where the different stories come in from all caretakers in the household. What to do when your child refuses to get out of the car at the car line? You've got a lot of cars behind you. Oh, yes. <laughs> that mm-hmm. happened the other day to my husband. So That's a good one. Pull them out, I guess. What is his advice? Yes. I've seen parents yeah, get he out was and getting open out. the door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was getting out of the car to literally forcibly remove him <laughs> and send him in the so, hallway. <laughs> so our fun fact, our school, our elementary, not the middle school or the high school, but the elementary school has a teacher there. And I'm pretty sure that's their main function. That's their job. She extracts the children them from the vehicles. the vehicles. She has toys. <laughs> she has, you know, songs. She's, yeah, something. She's got some tricks. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think. That's I love that one. That one's fun. I could see submissions easily into that one, too. There oh, you go. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It might make a good TikTok account. It might, so yeah. it might make a good, <laughs> a lot of good series. It might make a good public podcast, actually. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Megan, and sharing all your learnings in your exploration of Hello Audio. We appreciate you as a user, and we're excited what you've created for people. So thanks for coming by. Thank you for having me. And there you have it, audio heads. Another episode of Launch a Private Podcast is in the books. I hope you're leaving today feeling even more ready to amplify your voice and connect with your audience in meaningful ways. The adventure continues in our next episode with even more insights, strategies, and inspiration to help you along your own private podcasting journey. Of course, make sure to check out helloaudio.fm to start your own private podcast. And remember, you've got amazing content that needs to be heard. So let's turn the volume up. Until next time.